This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio B, your hosts, Spencer Linton and Kristen Kozlowski. Yeah, BYU Sports Station is live. Your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere we have arrived the final day of June in 2022. It is Thursday, June 30th, wherever and however you're connected. Always great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with the woman who is simply here to launch a brand new countdown on this show. Let's start the campaign, Kristen. (laughs) Always. That's why I'm here, right? Just for today. (laughs) Look, I know we love countdowns on this show, and so specifically came in today. Mm -hmm. As BYU fans, we are looking forward to this, so hit it. Countdown to the Big 12. 366. Yes. Church voice. A big countdown requires a big church voice. 366 days until BYU is officially a member of the Big 12 Conference. Let's call that your Big 12 voice. My Big 12 voice? Yeah, you can have a Big 12 voice. (laughs) <laughs> That's pretty good. The church has a Big 12, right? Yeah. So we, uh, yeah, BYU football, basketball, all sports will have the Big 12. And now I have a Big 12 voice, apparently. Yeah. And now you're going to have to do that the same way every time. No, I'm not going to yeah. do that, Kristen. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I'm not going to do that to you and Jerem and Jason and oh, Dave please, and Blaine and whoever please. else I'm co-hosting with. Okay, maybe I'll do it to Jerem. <laughs> yeah, just Jerem. <laughs> maybe. See if he can match that tone. 366 days away from BYU getting into the Big 12 Conference officially. So our question of the day is the following. What is the one thing you want to see happen from BYU sports in the next 366 days before the Cougar Athletic Department joins the Big 12? Essentially, what accomplishment That's coming fast. do you want? Yes. Yeah, that, one I mean, year, year from year tomorrow. Goes fast. Once you hit Christmas, Christmas is over. It doesn't feel like it's going to come, right? It goes fast. It's just like Christmas in July for yes, BYU fans absolutely. when that happens, right? We're there next year. Let's go. Okay, with the Big 12 countdown fully implemented for this show, here's your Thursday lineup headlined by a mostly finalized BYU men's basketball roster. What does the starting five look like at this point? And more importantly, because I know you're all thinking about it, is this the roster that will have BYU men's basketball dancing next March? Speaking of hoops, How about the BYU women? Basketball assistant Aaron Koloff joins us live to make his show debut. What will the women's roster look like? And how do they fill some enormous voids? What's the status on Shaylee Gonzalez? Is she maybe still, please, hopefully, thinking about coming back? If you're a fan, you're hoping it's still there. A lot of hope. Plus, which former or current BYU basketball players would you invite to play on your specialized three-on-three team? Kristen, I know that you've got a unique take oh, yeah. on this, right? I, I don't, it came pretty quickly. I <laughs> yeah, can't wait to hear Kristen's <laughs> picks. And Ashley Hatch is on the award hunt, which leads us to today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Lead us off, Kristen. Ashley Hatch, nominated for an SB. She's nominated for the best National Women's Soccer League player. And SBs are an award for excellence in sports performance and achievements in the calendar year for the washington spirit she started nine of ten matches played 824 minutes scored four goals so far in the 2022 season and in the 2022 challenge cup she started seven of eight games played in 663 minutes she played a ton and scored six goals and she's effective yes absolutely a stud had 10 regular season goals in 2021 to win the nwsl golden boot yeah yeah i, I know right now she's not the leading scorer in 2022 right. She's still very effective. So, but we asked her about it. Like, do you want to win the Golden Boot? Like, is it a thing now? And she's like, yeah, there's kind of like this competitive angle and some pressure to, like, repeat. Absolutely. To defend my Golden Boot title. So good luck to Ashley. And BYU fans, frankly, make it happen. BYU fans are incredible at getting in these online situations <laughs> and voting and voting and voting and voting again. Social media. Get Ashley Hatch and Espy. Let's go. Yeah, it's on us. Former BYU basketball big man Eric Mika and the Team USA World Cup qualifying squad play Puerto Rico tomorrow. Tip-off set for 8, 10 p.m. Eastern. Mika, remember, helped lead the 2020 February USA America Cup qualifying team to a 2-0 record and a pair of wins over none other than Puerto Rico. He averaged nine points, five and a half rebounds, shot 60% from the field. Good luck to Mika and the Team USA World Cup qualifying squad. Absolutely. And then Austin Rustan, former BYU TV PA, one of our own, <laughs> and a current BYU golf SID, 
He shoots nine under for 63. That's incredible. Incredible. For medalist honors in the last chance qualifier for the Utah State Am. And now he'll compete at the State Am on July 11th. This is wild. Okay, he's the SID for BYU yeah, men's golf. Not, right? not on the team as an maybe, athlete. Maybe Coach Brockbank and Coach Miller are like, hmm. Austin, you got to rethink this. Keep, keep doing this thing, and, and maybe you shouldn't just be the SID. Yeah. You've earned <laughs> yourself maybe, a spot. Maybe you should, I don't know, come play on the team. <laughs> Wild. Congratulations to Austin. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. A finalized BYU men's basketball roster. We think. At least reports have surfaced that all 13 scholarship pieces are in place with the latest edition of Noah Waterman, a stretch four, 6'11", two years ago shot 53% from the three-point line. That dipped a little bit last year, but now he's at BYU with Mark Pope and a revamped staff. There have been a ton of spots to fill. The coaches have worked hard, and now we think we have this finalized roster. So now we can push it forward, Kristen. Like, well, how will this BYU team stack up? What will the starting five look like? And most importantly... Is this a BYU basketball roster that you believe will get BYU back to the NCAA tournament after the Cougars did not make the big dance last year? Well, if you're Mark Pope and his coaching staff, you sure hope it is with what you've done, putting in that effort. Ten players. Ten. Left. Ten from last year's roster between transfers, graduation, on a mission. Yep. So uh, in my perspective, I still think we're on the bubble, unfortunately. I okay. Think, I think we narrowly missed it this season. Okay, But if these transfers can't come in and make an immediate impact, which I think they can, they have to make that immediate impact, especially Rudy Williams at that point guard position. I think he's in. I think he's a lock for starting unless barring injuries. Then you got Trey Stewart. Trey Stewart, who's a returner, didn't get minutes last year, but this is a guy I've watched him all summer and seen him through scrimmages mm. throughout summer. He's emerging as okay. a, a player that can make an impact. Now, he's an immediate defensive presence, right, Absolutely. because of his energy and right. his athleticism. Right. but – the question mark on him was, can he hit shots from the outside and score? He's, he's lightning fast, right? So off the dribble. Yes. But can he hit, hit shots from the outside, be okay. a three-level scorer? So okay. I like the, that position at the, at the one spot. And you bring in Noah Waterman, who's going to give you some size, going to stretch the defense at that four spot, maybe five spot, backing up Foose, returning Foose and Atiki inside. Okay, hey, Clearly, BYU is doubling is, down like that's the post, right? right? That's the post. Yeah, and, and I think they add that dimension of stretching the defense with Noah because teams now have either have to go small to guard him or they're going to bring their center and have to chase him around the perimeter, right? This is not unique to BYU basketball under Mark Pope because they asked Yoli Childs when they were playing oh, no. a four-out, one-in yes. offensive format. Yoli was kind of that stretch four, right? Right. Now, BYU clearly, we think, is going to do that again with Noah Waterman. Right. So as you continue to go down the roster, look at Spencer Johnson. Spencer had minutes last year. I think he's going to be a starter right there along Rudy Williams going in there. Then Trevin Nell. So Spencer and Trevin, the two experienced returners, potential seniors. Spencer, depending on how he uses that COVID year. I feel like they have enough pieces of experience mixed with transfers, but – do they have someone that's going to emerge like an Alex Barcelo? Is there an alpha? Right? Who is the alpha on this team? And I think that's the biggest question mark. You need an alpha, maybe two, one or two of those players. I mean, last year we saw Alex needed help. He needed another star to step up and score. And I Especially think when the two bigs got hurt. When Gavin Baxter and Richard Harward were out right. seven games into the season, it was like, okay, what now? And I think that player... In my mind, that stands out in the front is Foos. I mean, he averaged okay. near a double-double. I think that he's got confidence now, experience under him. He was learning so much this last year, right? So now hopefully he can play off his instincts going into this next season. But do we have that? I think that's more the question mm. mark that will lead us into the NCAA tournament. Okay, some big questions that come up. And, and you present a lot of ideas. I, I do want to start here because you brought up Trey Stewart. Are you suggesting maybe that he will have some point guard handling duties behind Rudy Williams, or is Trey specifically a wing player? Because if not, then is Dallin Hall off of his mission the backup point guard? Right. What's BYU do after Rudy right. Williams I, at the I point mean, guard position? We haven't even talked about the missionaries coming back. So you got Dallin Hall, Tanner Toulson in there. Richie Saunders. Richie Saunders. Richie looked really good when I saw him this last week. And, and obviously they're trying to get their bodies back. Mm -hmm. It's such an adjustment off the mission trying to come in mentally or starting school. I mean, it's just kind of a whirlwind, right? Sure. Richie looked good, but 
Dallin is still pool workouts, trying to take it slow, trying to get his body back, not in the mix. There's still a lot of time till November. So is Trey handling the ball I after Rudy? Trey, it, from what I've seen with Trey Stewart, he is greatly improved. Wow. Greatly improved. Right. And so I think he has that potential to help handle the ball, but also defend at the point guard. Because okay. you know he's quick enough to stay in front of guys. And, and they will need that. Okay. The second question that comes up after uh, some awesome analysis, and again, you've been watching the team um, and have had some access and exposure to them. What does BYU do with Atiki Ali Atiki? Like, clearly he's the five, but how much is he going to play with Foose and Noah Waterman in the mix? I think those will be the two starting bigs. So sure. what is what is Atiki's, we expect it to be a grown role, but how much will that role grow? He is so raw still. Yes. Right? We saw that last year. He's just so raw in there, thrown into minutes that he was not expected. Same with Foos because of those injuries. So I think the development, even though he was thrown into that, may have halted just a little bit because the confidence goes down a little bit, right? When you're, you're being kind of yo-yoed in, depending on how you play, we need him to get his confidence up to be not just a raw player, but in there and be able to bang inside and be able to give maybe like eight, eight points, six rebounds a game to really just kind of be more of a force inside to help take that pressure off Foose. And if it's not going to be a tiki, I think it's going to be Waterman. Okay. So based on, and we like to put these players in roles, right? Yes. The leadership role. That's what we like to do. I feel like even though Rudy Williams is a transfer with one year left, mm -hmm. who he is, his personality, his style of play, because he's the point guard, he is the natural leader of the team. Yes. Okay. So he's got to win the trust. And from what I hear, that is going well so far. Like, he is earning the trust of his teammates, but he's got he's to continue to earn that and be the leader. Like, he's the dude. Right. He's the guy that's been to Kansas State, Coastal Carolina, Juco. He's been all over the place. How can he gel and mold this team together and take that leadership role? I'm with, I think Foose needs to be an alpha for sure. The guy who I want to take that step towards alpha is Gideon George. Yeah. I, I – He's a guy that feels like he can play in the NBA, Kristen. Absolutely. I mean, if he's he going to play in the waters. NBA, yes. If he's yeah. going to play in the NBA, he has to ascend to that alpha role. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, he put up some nice numbers, shot the ball relatively well, especially at the end of the season. Can Gideon George ascend to an alpha role? If he can join Foose as two alphas and then Rudy in that leadership role, okay, now we're talking because then you've got some nice experience pieces with Spencer Johnson there, and Trevin Nell has some experience coming back. But – I mean, if we're looking at the starting five right now, if you were saying, hey, Spencer, who who should start right now? Rudy Williams is clearly the point yes. guard. I would put Spencer Johnson the on two. the wing at yes. the two because I trust him to defend on the perimeter. Yeah. And he knows he, Mark he Pope's system. He that last year. Yes, he, he knows the system, right? Yeah. I'd put him at the two. I would start Gideon George at the three yeah. on the other side, other wing. And then Waterman is the stretch four, big man, 6'11", can shoot it, and Foose and down Foose. low inside. Yeah. Okay, so that, that pretty, would be the starting lineup. five today if you were to say, hey, BYU's got to go play a basketball game tomorrow on July 1st. Yeah, and I agree with you. I think Rudy comes in, he's going to handle the ball the most, right, at that point guard position. You have to be a leader at the point guard spot. Because if you're not, it's not going to work. You have to set the tempo on both sides of the ball. I think Rudy has it in him, and especially with the experience he has coming in, he's going to be able just to be an impact right away, be right in that starting spot, handling the ball. Now, when you talk about the trust, that takes time, right? Earning yes. the trust of your players, being able to be not only get it done vocally out there on the court, but get it done with just your workmanship and, and having them buy into who Rudy is and wanting to back him. Go he's to a very impressive him. young oh, man. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He's been on the show. We love Rudy. Yes. We love that he's recruiting BYU. Like, I mean, in fact, he joked when Jackson Robinson signed, he's like, hey, you're welcome, BYU. I've, yeah. been, on the, I've been on the recruiting trail, okay? That's Jackson's part of it, right? Jackson's a good right? player, too. Yes. So that was a big get for them. But uh, I think Rudy's got it in him, and I think Rudy could for sure be an alpha. Yes. And okay. So, I, I mean, I look at the starting five, and I'm like, okay. The key reserves, and I feel like BYU, even though they lost so much, okay, there's still some experience depth there. Sure. Led by Trevin Nell and Jackson Robinson. Okay, and then Atiki, Ali Atiki, Trey Stewart Trey. is the one that I wonder about, Fresh right? Mark. How much will he play? And then can Dallin Hall get game ready? fresh off of his mission. I feel like those are the 10 in the mix. We'll see about Tanner Toulson. Tanner Toulson came off of his mission not fully healthy, uh, a little bit banged up. Um, and then Braden Moore, Richie Saunders looks good too. I, I feel right. like Richie's kind of the 11th man of the 13 scholarship well, you players. You got to throw Jackson in there, Jackson Robinson. Yeah. I mean, he For is sure. long, athletic. For sure. He, he's a key reserve. So is that is that a roster that can get BYU to the NCAA tournament? 
It feels bubblicious. Too early. It feels bubblicious. Yeah. Good players, they're gonna the the task is always tough when you have to bring in a bunch of new pieces and get them to gel fast because that that's gonna be the I key. Think, I think you just answered the question though. Can they gel together? Because I think they have the pieces to be an NCAA tournament team, but can they gel? Can the chemistry be there? That's gonna be the biggest key. And mm. that chemistry. Leaderships, alpha roles assumed. The gel, like that, that is the challenge for the coaching staff, yeah, right? Absolutely. Yeah, looking forward to it. Right now feels bubblicious. Our question of the day. What is the one thing that you want to see from BYU sports in the next 366 days before the Cougars and their athletic department officially join the Big 12? My answer was very quick and very simple. It was immediate. But we want to hear from you, BYU SN, in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation. On BYU Sports Nation. At J underscore Royal 09 on Twitter answers BYU football to win a bowl game. Okay. Can't go into the Big 12 with no momentum. So if BYU loses in the New Mexico Bowl, not sure why we're going to the New Mexico Bowl. Really hope Just that's not the case. Out there. Really hope that's not the case. Win some big football recruits. The next few weeks are very important for that. And BYU basketball to make and win an NCAA tournament game. Women's sports will continue to dominate. Hashtag BYUSN. Okay. So my answer is in there. I want BYU basketball back in the NCAA tournament. Okay. I feel like the program needs that injection of life and hope and accomplishment as they then venture into what we believe is clearly going to be the most difficult basketball conference in America. One more year to do it, right, <laughs> to prep for that? Like, if you miss the NCAA tournament two years in a row, uh, you kind of limp into this incredibly difficult conference, right? You just need that positive mojo. Here's what that affects, too, from the basketball side, both sides, but football, basketball, all the sports. If you're not winning, you can't recruit high-level players to play in the Big 12. So for me, accomplishment is winning. You have to win. you got to make a good bowl game for the football team. Basketball team needs to be in the, the NCAA tournament. A lot of the women's programs here at BYU are already on their way. I mean, look at soccer, what they did last year in the national championship game, right? Volleyball they're, to the Sweet 16. They're on their way already, so they are landing big recruits. And football, basketball programs, they have to continue to land big recruits, improve the depth, improve the talent going in the Big 12. Yes, in large part, the women's sports are Big win. 12 ready. Yeah. They're Big 12 ready. They are. Okay? Are the men's programs Big 12 ready? We've got some work to do. Yes. So, We're getting there. Uh, number two on my list, by the way, BYU winning some type of West Coast Conference championship in men's basketball. I don't care if it's get hot, win three games in Las Vegas. That feels more likely. Sure. Right? Just then find beating, a way. Then beating so you, the so you don't leave the WCC with a big bagel in terms of tournament titles or regular season titles. I think a lot of fans would like to see them beat Gonzaga. That, that would make their season. <laughs> it, it often, you know? They've done that before, but they yeah. didn't win a title. I know. I agree. All right. Hashtag BYUS on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to join that conversation. All right. Coming up, what will we be getting after BYU wins the first Big 12 championship? And he's number one in our power rankings for BYU Radio Hoops analysts. His name is Mark Durant. He joins us on BYU Sports Nation to discuss the men's basketball roster. Don't go anywhere. I know what it's like to be overlooked to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Introducing the Truck for Adventure. The all-new 2022 Nissan Frontier doesn't compromise on power or comfort. This mid-sized truck was redesigned to incorporate the latest technology and designs for safety, comfort, and convenience. Plus, with up to 6,700 pounds of towing capacity and best-in-class horsepower, it's rugged enough for adventure and still safe enough to transport all your favorite people. Where's your new Frontier? You'll find it at Tim Dowling Nissan Southtown in South Jordan.
thought I was gonna see you at work this morning, 8 a.m. Waste my summer. Come on, B. Ride with us. No, man, I gotta go take care of that dog. Won't even let me touch him. I didn't come over and show you a few tricks. He screws up one time, just one time. He's gonna get put down. Yo, we got the Air Jordan of dogs here, man. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Join us tomorrow for the Best of Deep Blue, Volume 4. Watch the stories of Tyler Algier and the Kua brothers. Watch or listen tomorrow at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. We are live in Studio B on a Thursday with your day-to-day -day BYU Sports play-by-play -play alongside the fabulous Kristen Kozlowski. I am merely Spencer Linton. <laughs> Joining us now is one of our all-time favorites. He is the BYU basketball radio analyst on the men's side. He is a former Cougar hoopster. Mark Durant back on the program looking fabulous in that royal blue. Mark, thanks for hanging out with us. It's always great. And, man, what a joy it is to be on with Kristen. I would certainly <laughs> admire her and think she is absolutely fantastic uh, at what she does, especially – the color commentary, it's a little bit depressing to watch her because <laughs> I realize I, I'm really bad at this. But you are not. Awesome. I'm, trying, so to, to I'm see trying to follow your lead, Mark. <laughs> oh, man, you followed and then you're, you're way ahead now. You're like secretariat, way ahead of me. I'm one of those other horses <laughs> trying to catch up. <laughs> oh, the humble Mark Durant. But you're right. Kristen's amazing. Um, and speaking of girl power and, and just women that accomplish things in sports, I want to talk about your daughter, Stratton, because she has accomplished some awesome things on the golf circuit in Utah, uh, specifically at the Glenmore Golf Course. How much of what she's accomplished winning tournaments and, you know, improving her game is because of what you have helped her do, Mark, in teaching her about one of the greatest games ever invented? Oh, Spencer, I'm glad you brought it up because, it, I mean, of all the sports things I've done and seen, being her – coach and her caddy uh, has been the, the most gratifying thing I've ever done. It is so fun. You can't imagine how fun it is being on the golf course with her, watching her do her thing. Uh, she, she succeeds in spite of me. She's just very talented. But I tell you, these young girls that I watch are just so incredibly talented. I mean, it would just blow your mind how they hit the ball and how they manage the course and, and, and perform under pressure. I mean, it's, these are, 12, 13, 14-year-old girls just playing incredible golf. Wow. Which is super, super fun. And uh, listen, I, I just couldn't be more thrilled to, to be a part of her, see her progress, and she's terrific. But, man, there's some really, really talented, wonderful young women playing golf in this state and all over the country. Yeah. It is awesome to see. Seriously, we got to get Stratton after uh, her tournament win at the Glenmore Parent Junior Invitational. He carried it me. Okay. You scared me, man. Her <laughs> shoulders were sore after that, man. Bring her on. Yeah. Well, I, we know Carrie Roberts pretty well, so we, we got to get Stratton onto Carrie's radar early here. Let's get this scene going, man. Listen, Carrie, come on. Start sending the letters. It's never too early. It's not nowadays, right? It's way. It's so much pressure, like you mentioned, with these young players. But, Mark, oh. as, as we shift to the men's basketball team and looking at their program, I want to ask you if, if you were in your prime right now for Coach Mark Pope, what role would you play? What, what would you be contributing to this basketball team if you were back in your prime? Listen, Listen Kristen, even in my prime, my role would be Give getting guys water at timeout. I mean, I was I need some water, uh, Rudy. You need some water, Trev. I mean, that and, and waving my towel because that these guys are so good nowadays. I mean, as good as I thought we were, and as good as we were, uh, they're just better today. And uh, it's a, a new mindset and the way they train and and play and AU and and get experience. They're just they're super athletic and nutrition, all those things. And uh, but you know, I mean. Uh, it, I don't compare d decades to decades. I mean, it's all about how you compare against other teams now, right? And that's the real question for BYU is how you compare. Uh, but you need, I mean, listen, I was not, I was incredibly average, but you need uh, guys like me that will go out and do some dirty work for you, like a, uh, you know, Spencer Johnson and play defense and sure. get some steals and get some rebounds and, and those kind of guys, but you also need superstars. And uh, I think BYU can have a good mix of that on this year's team. And I think that's the key to have all those types of guys 
coming together. And that's the real question, right, Kristen, is you got a lot of new guys and they're clearly talented. Uh, can they come together and, and play well as a team and, and become better than their individual parts and be that team that can really excel and, and do the things you, you're dreaming about doing? Mark Duran is on BYU Sports Nation. And, Mark, we're already down the path to answering my next question a little bit. But with the recent addition of Noah Waterman, 6'11", stretch four, one point was shooting 53% from the three-point line. And those numbers dipped last year, but he was dealing with some injuries. Now Mark Pope brings him in as we think the final scholarship player. So with those 13 scholarships in place, what do you like most about the current BYU basketball team? Well, I like that they brought in a lot of shooters. I mean, I think for BYU to really excel at a high level with the with what they can bring to the table, they need to be one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. And that's what they were a couple of years ago. And that's what they were when I thought they could really make a run in the tournament. Of course, it got canceled. But uh, I think if BYU can be one of the best shooters, that's the great equalizer in college basketball, that three-point shot. If you've got shooters and can hit the three, you can be in games. You can win games against really good teams. And, and I think you talk about Noah Waterman. And that, that I mean, that was... BYU was not a particularly good three-point shooting team last year. I mean, you had good shooters. You had Alex, obviously, a terrific shooter, and Trevin, uh, and, you know, Gideon, those guys. But overall, I, I don't think they were as good as they needed to be or could have been last year. And part of that was because you had Foos, who's not a shooter, and Atiki. They had, were forced to play a lot of minutes. Defenses could then extend out on the three-point shooters because there, the spacing was, it was made it easier for defense to guard the three. So it was tough. And I, I think a guy like Noah Waterman, it's just the way it is in college basketball. You have to have a, a, a guy at the four that can extend the defense and can shoot, really. I mean, I, it used to be I would watch growing up, and it used to bug me when 6'11 guys would shoot the three. I'm like, you're 6'11. <laughs> Go post up. That's what your job is. But that's not the way it is anymore. It's it's it, it, you, you're, You've got 6'11 guys that are real threats from the three. That's going to stretch the floor for everybody. Even boost down low is going to free him up. And it's going to make a big difference. And then you throw in a bunch of other guys and return missionaries who are real shooters, Dallin, Richie, Tanner, uh, all those guys. And uh, like I talked about Trevin and I think Spencer. Trevin and Spencer, I think, uh, you know, wh when you've got superstars, you kind of relegate yourself a bit to a secondary role, right? But then when those guys are gone, you become the guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's almost yeah. like a mantle shifts to you. And this is a great chance for Gideon, uh, Trevin, Spencer to have the mantle come to them. It's their team now. It's their opportunity. And it changes your mindset, right? It changes your confidence. And you can become a different player. And I hope to see that from those guys because, you know, the, the, it's wide open for them. Let's, let's see what you've got. And it, it changes you as a player. Uh, and, uh, and so I'm excited to see how it all comes together. But I, in that's a long-winded answer to your question, though. I think the real opportunity for this team is there'll be a better three-point shooting team. They'll be able to spread the floor, and that will help everybody. Now, is this a team that narrowly missed the NCAA tournament last year? Is this a team that can get back to the NCAA tournament with all those transitioning roster players coming in, transfers? With the group right now, do you see them get to the NCAA tournament this next season? Uh, I think so. Yeah, I'll say that. I'll say that. Um, you know, a couple months ago, you're like, what is happening? What, <laughs> what's going to go? You know, are we, are we going to have enough guys to play? And uh, and then Coach Pope does his thing. I mean, he, he's so good at what he does. And they hit the transfer stuff really hard. Which and then you got these young return missionaries who were just tremendous. And there's always a question mark in all of these guys. Transfers or, or, or missionaries coming back when they get on the floor. What's it going to be? Uh, and they're you know all these guys are freshmen, younger. Uh, so you just never know how it's going to translate to being on the Marriott Center floor with all those fans playing against Division One competition. But in looking at the list of players and who they've got and who they've got coming back, I think Foose is going to just be amazing. I think Gideon could be a guy that really has an amazing year. Yes, uh, I hope it is. Yes. I mean, I go back to Keena Young, and I talk about that mantle. Keena was very good. And I mentioned Keenan because he's, he was a smaller guy, but he could score in the paint. I think Gideon is a guy that if, if that mantle goes to him and he knows this is my team, I can do my my thing and get confidence, he could be just amazing. So anyway, 
I mean, you got a really good core, Bradley Spencer, I mentioned. You got a good guard coming in with Rudy. I mean, you got a really nice core. And then it's just how many of those other guys can step up at this level and play well. But the great thing is they're going to have an opportunity. They can play. Everybody will have a chance to prove themselves and play. When I was a freshman coming in, we lost Mike Smith. We were picked to finish last in the conference. But there was a lot of openings. And guys like Andy Toulson, whose son, you mentioned Tanner, Marty Haas, it became their team, and they were just amazing. And then role players like me came in, and we, we finished at the top of the conference and went to the tournament. I mean, it's just about how everybody comes together, gets their confidence, and comes together and plays as a team. But clearly, to me, this rock. Tournament. Certainly. Mark Duran is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Mark, let's finish with this. And I just put out my perspective starting five if we were to see a BYU men's basketball game on July 1st. Obviously, Rudy Williams is the clear point guard. He is what I hope is the leader role and, and can be an alpha of sorts. I think he'll be joined by Spencer Johnson because of his perimeter defense and his knowledge of what Mark Pope wants to do on both ends of the floor. Gideon George, who you just mentioned, we hope, takes a large step forward and really kind of assumes a greater role. Throwing Noah Waterman as your stretch four, and then Fusini Traore down at the five. Would you make any changes to that perspective starting five if BYU were to play a game tomorrow? If so, where would you make those changes? Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, I certainly think Rudy, I mean, he's got the experience in the right places too, right? He's not going to play anybody that is going to be better than the guys that he's played against and in Jackson the same way. I mean, they've, they've been played against top talent. And so, yeah, Rudy, I think Spencer uh, and Gideon. And then you're going to rotate in Trevin and Jackson uh, in that five. I think that five is pretty good. I guess my big question with that starting five would be Noah, just because I haven't seen much of him um, and he's been injured. Um and, and so maybe you're thinking you play a tiki, but then you kind of get back to the problem I was talking about earlier where you're kind of, you're, you're not spreading. the. And Mark has cut out for just a moment. Lost he's him. talking through that starting five. Okay. So we'll see if we get Mark back in just a moment, but like, he's right. The big, the biggest question mark there is like, okay, what do you, what do you do when you're rotating in bigs? Yeah. Cause he hasn't, we, he's right. We, we haven't seen Noah Waterman. Like we're we're all kind of assuming We've like he's going to be right? an excellent three point shooter. It makes sense to push him yeah. as a, a stretch four, but you know you got a Tiki in there. But after Foose, a Tiki, and Noah Waterman, like where do you there, go for a, where do you go there. for a size? Do you have Jackson Robinson play a little bit of the four because he's a little bit bigger and longer? Yeah, yeah. he's a perimeter player though. I've, exactly, I've watched, he's a perimeter player. I've watched Jackson enough. He wants to play on the wing, and so you get into foul trouble or players get hurt. I mean, look what happened this last year. Your two bigs get hurt. I mean, there can be a, a big question mark there for sure in that post, that 4-5 spot. And just maybe there's a walk-on player that does help fill some of that size. Absolutely. They still have to fill those deficit. walk-on roles. So sure. Yes. Okay, so uh, we've just been told we, we just lost Mark. It's okay. He was amazing. Uh, at the you, very Mark. end, the the very end of his last response. Yes, we love Mark Durant, and seriously, congratulations to his daughter Stratton on winning that tournament. What a cool thing to watch your kids succeed! And Kristen, I know oh, you yeah. know about that too, yeah. right? Yeah, it's, it doesn't even compare to what you did. When your kids are succeeding, it's a whole different ball game. Oh, it's fantastic! Yeah. It's awesome. So, congrats to her. All right. Well, yeah. I, I need to get on your level, you and Mark. <laughs> the need kids to, are young. They are very young. All right? You got time. You can, you, got time. you can teach me the ways yeah. of elite parenting right. in the world of sports. En enjoy it while they're young, and it doesn't get so chaotic, <laughs> all right? Okay, coming up, he's jacked to be a Cougar. Women's Hoop assistant Aaron Callhop joins us. And which BYU players would we draft for our make-believe three-on-three teams? It is make-believe, right? Absolutely. This is BYU Sports Nation.
Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Welcome to a partnership where customer experience comes first. It's our focus. It's your expectation. We provide support to those that go the extra mile for all of us. Supplying products, training, and service for generations. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com. Turn TV time into together time with the BYU TV app. Watch all your favorite shows when, where, and how you want. This isn't like a practical joke, is it? No, sir. Immerse yourself in stories with all the feels. Go on uninterrupted journeys of discovery and see families coming together while watching with your own. See new and original content all for free on the BYU TV app. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. This is BYU Sports Nation. To interact with the show and get great content throughout the day, follow us on the social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. She is Kristen Kozlowski, elite sports parent. I am Spencer Linton. It's time to whip it. Cougar Whip Around presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. Kristen, take it All away. Right. At CBK Reports tabs, BYU to be the best college hoops team in the state this upcoming season. Will this be true at the end of the season? Yes, it will be true. State of Utah. Would I ever admit that it wouldn't be true? Are you kidding you me? You have to, right? Yeah, okay, I agree. Yeah, yes, it's, it's, I agree. Like, well, in, in all seriousness, as much as I love Craig Smith, like, he's a great coach. Good job. Chris Bird is now over there. Gavin Baxter's transferred BYU to Utah. Like, they've got some good things going in that, in, in their, you know, positive direction. Utah but, State, even. You got to throw them in the mix. I still think BYU is going to end up being the best men's basketball team in the yes. state when all is said and done in 2022. Okay, ditto. I agree with that. Okay. I think they've got the pieces. We talked a lot about the pieces. And Mark Pope at the head, he's doing a good job. Yes. On to the next. Locally, the Utah Jazz are hosting a three-on-three -three basketball tournament. Kristen, if you were putting your team together, which two former or maybe current Cougars are you teaming up with? All right, this was easy for me. Okay. Came, came to mind Jimmer. Yep. I'm going to go with Jimmer, right? You mm -hmm. have to go with Jimmer. You got to have somebody on the outside. Then you got to have a bully down low, somebody down low. So I'm going to go with Hapa Alarujo. <laughs> the muscle inside. Size. Yes, size. You have to have size in there that can just bang it down low. And my fourth is going to be Tower House. You got to have a sub. Oh, you're going substitute role. Yeah. Okay, I like that. Yeah. See, I, didn't, I didn't go that route. You have to. Okay, you, but you're right. Okay, so now I'm thinking on the fly. I need a fourth. I'll tell you my first two. Yes, I'm with you. Jimmer Fredette. Come on. Jimmer Fredette was built to just crush a three-on-three yeah. -three tournament, Absolutely. right? You can't stop Jimmer. I don't care who you put on. In three-on-three -three format, you can't stop Jimmer. Then my big would be Brandon Davies. Ooh. Okay, you want to talk about toughness yeah. and skill playing in the Euro League? It's I think it's much more physical in the Euro League than it is in yeah, the NBA. Sure. Brandon Davies is my big. As my fourth, yeah, I just want you on the spot. I just want another elite shooter. So I'm going with Alex Barcelo. Okay. Alex is playing at the highest level at the top of his game right now. He has been working all summer long. He is in prime condition to crush in a three and three Pretty tournament. Good. I still think Jimmer, beat you. A B for three. <laughs> And Brandon Jim, Davis. Jimmer would come to my side, so <laughs> that leaves you a three. Okay. All right. Former BYU O-line coach and current Baylor O-line coach, Eric Mateos, tweeted out a picture of what he called the coolest birthday gift ever. All right. It's a belt buckle that says Big 12 champions. So what will you be getting when BYU wins the Big 12 championship? What will I be getting? Yes. What would you like to get as a gift? Oh, yeah, the belt buckle is such a Texas tough guy thing, right? Yeah, absolutely. So I was thinking, like, what is unique to utah like that and i couldn't really come up with any a beehive yeah yeah it's, i'm not gonna get a beehive okay uh, but i do love golf though so i'd probably get like i don't know custom made like golf clubs that have big 12 champs inscribed on the outside 
of the face of the club, okay. something like that. All right. To remind myself every day as I swing my clubs in the summer, I'm a Big 12 champion. Okay. okay. I think I'd go with the ring. You just want a ring? Yes. Well, I'm not a bling guy. Use. I know, but something you can use and show off, right? Are you going to wear that belt buckle much? No. How much are you going to use the golf clubs? You no, know I do want a belt buckle after BYU beats Baylor that says we beat Baylor. Okay. <laughs> I get I'd it. like Eric to see that belt buckle too. Hey, Eric. How's it going, man? You would proudly sport that thing. <laughs> Vengeance, petty and vindictive. All right, I'm all for ring. it. All right, coming up, rise and shout to one of our own. And the newest BYU women's basketball assistant coach, Aaron Koloff, joins us. Why does he expect BYU to compete right away for another West Coast Conference title? This is BYU Sports Nation. They prefer to be bringing the heat. Getting set for success. Demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Utah is a special place. Our communities, the people, the history, there is no place quite like Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're honored to say that we are from Utah. We live here, work here, and when someone is injured, we're proud to say we've helped a neighbor when they've needed it most. We know Utah. At Siegfried and Jensen, we're here for you. Call us today. There are things happening in Seaburg. They care more about people spending money than they do about people getting sick. If they're causing toxic pollution, it is everyone's fight. We can't just let them get away with it. If anyone can figure this out, it's my brother. Friends don't abandon each other. Fine, be heroes. I know what it's like to love someone so much you'd do anything for them. Whatever happens, I'm glad we're facing it together. Me too. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. BYU Sports Nation has its own YouTube channel. Get all the interviews by subscribing to share at two and share the BYU Sports Nation YouTube channel. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We're live in Studio B on a Thursday final day of June. We are 366 days away from BYU officially joining the Big 12. We launched that countdown early in the show. And I can't think of a better way to keep the energy rolling late in this show than by bringing on a guy who said in a Twitter post he is jacked to be at BYU. The new BYU women's basketball assistant coach Aaron Koloff is with us making a show debut. Aaron, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. Excited to be here uh, and, and with you guys, uh, and it's going to be a, a great time today. We're going to have a, we're going to have a lot of fun. absolutely. Okay, so when you say you are jacked to be at BYU, it's a loaded statement. So. What does that mean? What, why, why are you so excited and amped and jacked to be at BYU? Well, with the transition going to the Big 12 and all the excitement, this is, this is going to be a great place to be, to build a program to compete and be at the top of the Big 12. Now, why was BYU the right fit for you? How did that play out for you in finding out about the job and knowing this is the spot I want to be? It's a combination of things. The, uh, we got you know just the tradition here, the core values that they have here, family atmosphere, but also uh, with Amber leading the, you know, leading her charge and her start here, wanted to be a part of it too, because uh, uh, you know our, our core values and, and ethics really align line right straight up. Awesome. Okay. Well, you've had great success coaching at some previous Power Five programs, and as you mentioned, BYU is on the cusp of becoming officially a Power Five program. So, how do you see your role as a coach evolving with this specific staff? What are what are you going to bring to this staff? Well, having the opportunity to already be in the Big 12 for three years at TCU and then three years uh, in the SEC and then just coming from the Big 10, seeing a lot of different approaches, a lot of different um, game plans. Um, and I think just through that experience uh, 
It allows me to, you know, kind of mesh with some really uh, strong BU, BYU tra uh, traditions in, you know, Morgan, Lee, Amber. This place means a lot to them. And so when, when you're working with people that it means a lot to, you kind of get that vibe too. And coming to Provo, what do you like about Provo? I mean, tell some of the fans that even haven't visited Provo. The mountains are well known, but the facilities here at BYU above some of the best in the world. And so it's been awesome, I think, for you to come in and be able to see that. What, what's your first take on that? Well, for one of the first texts when, you know, after I got announced and stuff was, you know, because I like to recruit, uh, was this place is unreal. And it's not just unreal because of the facilities. It's unreal because of the people, the community. But there's just the aesthetics, too, when you walk out in the morning yeah. and you're going to, you know, go for a run. There's not, you know, th there's a reason why people feature this place and they, vac they vacation to this place because it, it is beautiful. BYU women's basketball assistant coach Aaron Koloff is with us on BYUSN. We've already talked a little bit about your role. I want to talk about some of your past specifically at Penn State. Um, you did a great job specifically with the bigs there and, and really helped them develop. So is that something that you're going to emphasize when you get to BYU, or, or how will your role with certain position groups and players evolve in Provo? Great question. Uh, really excited to come and work you know, and, and be on this staff and also have somebody that's had a lot of success at the at the big position in Morgan, sure. Um, we got a you know Amber was a great point guard. Lee could shoot it for days. Them kind of things are fun to see. And I've taken pride in my coaching career to be able to work with all position groups and kind of be multifaceted. Um, but you know Penn State, uh, you know Penn State, we had to go and we had to work with you know work with when I walked into a, a building program and we had to use the transfer portal and recruiting is the lifeline of every program. And the big part at BYU is you got to find the high character kids that can also compete on the court to help you compete in the Big 12. Now you mentioned the transfer portal, and with the roster turnover that you guys have had, a lot of holes to fill, a lot of question marks in certain areas. How is the roster looking right now? What are some of the holes that are are needing to be filled going into this year? Well, we got a lot of high character, strong kids that are you know good basketball IQ. Probably look to get uh, you know a little more athletic, but also just a little more uh, scoring power with what they've uh, lost in, in that great team that they had last year. Um, Transfer Portal allows you to do that. Um, and now it's obviously, you know, a little bit later in the portal now, not as many kids available. But th this is going to be the game every year is, uh, is getting kids the right fits out of the portal because there are some really good pieces. Okay, I, I, and I know that because BYU fans are, keep hitting me up about this, like, Spencer, what's the latest with Shaylee Gonzalez? Is there any chance that she comes back? Like, what can you tell us about the Shaylee Gonzalez situation? She's in the transfer portal. She said she was going to leave. Lee Kamard said, hey, our arms are still wide open. You can come back. What, what's the latest with Shaylee? That's true. Uh, spot on with Lee. Um, the, you know, the three of us assistants and uh, Amber have direct uh, communication, um, daily communication, and so it's – it's always a uh, you know that possibility, but um, you know we're, we're, we're we'll accept her with open arms. She's a she's a great ambassador for the program, great ambassador for the university, and so like you know that's just we're taking it day by day sure. with that situation, and um, you know looking for the best, and and we're 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 showing up every day working uh, with the with the pieces that we got, and we're going to go to work. That's what we're going to do. Let's talk about the pieces that you got, because you got some great returners coming back this next year. How do they look this summer? How have practice has been going with this team? Yeah, been here, been here a week, and the one thing that is really evident is that you got kids that are eager to learn. Uh, they're coachable, um, really getting uh, Amber's philosophy and her foundation um, pace. There's a lot of things just going from, you know, the first workout I, you know, I was able to observe to, you know, getting excited about ours today. Um, yesterday was a uh, was a good workout where there was a lot of um, a lot of energy, mm. and, and she's big on energy and effort, um, communication, being, getting on the same page. And the more that you do that, you build your foundation. We're looking at some of those key returners on the screen. I know Lauren Gustin, Emma Calvert, uh, a big that can absolutely shoot it. Nani Falate is a sharp shooter. Kaylee Smiler brings significant experience. She too is a shooter. What do you like about the returning core the most, Aaron? Their toughness. They got uh, you know. Just speaking on Nani and uh, Lauren, them are, them are some tough kids. Um, and they're kids that are wanting to win. Um, and they're kids that are going to get after it every day. Uh, you, you know, you just, you, just, you just want them to be, you know, just 1% better every day. 
uh, and it's going to be the key to our success this year is for some of the kids that maybe didn't have as mm. high numbers last year or experience to be efficient and be productive. All right, we talked about the team. Now let's talk a little bit about the coaching staff. And you're, you're the last piece that has been put together. So who is the most competitive on the coaching staff <laughs> and who is the best shooter on the coaching staff? Well, the, sh the shooter is still to be determined because we have not seen <laughs> any reps. Um, looking forward to get involved in that okay. and competitive. Um, I think that's the thing that I'm really excited about is there's not a like there's not a weak link as far as competitiveness and drive and work ethic on this staff. And mm. and I think that's that's a recipe for success uh, within itself. OK, you just tell Lee that uh, you and Morgan are coming for him. Right. Not to mention Amber. Lee just, Lee just you don't make it. Don't make him comfortable. OK, you don't have to. But you really don't have to tell him. He knows. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> he knows. They know. We know. Touche. Touche. Aaron Koloff is with us on BYU Sports Nation. Where did your relationship with Amber Whiting begin? Absolutely. Absolutely. So known, known Amber and Trent uh, for a couple of years and stuff. And then it was, um, you know, I got a phone call a couple of years ago uh, from a, a coach, a friend of mine, obviously been a couple of places, got a lot of different networks. And they're like, hey, I just want to introduce you. I want to make a phone call, introduce you to this, uh, the, the parents of, the, of a really good player. And mm -hmm. so that's how it started. Gotcha. Uh, got connected. It was a three-way call with Trent and then with Amber. And and when, when I saw the announcement um, that, you know, she was the head coach here, reached out to her right away, just said, hey, congrats, this and that. Feedback was, hey, do you mind, you want to talk? You know, like, let's let's do it. Happened to be that she was going to go into, um, they were going to play in the AAU tournament that weekend. Went and changed my travels, went and saw it just on purpose. Not just like to go watch and see how she conducted herself because I'm looking to be around high energy people, mm -hmm. a good vibe. And that's just kind of, you know, you don't have to be around her long to um, to gather that that uh, she's got all the winning characteristics uh, to be successful. This is a team that uh, year after year has really competed for West Coast Conference championships, both at the regular season level and in the tournament. Um, they let one slip away in the tournament last year, but had one of the greatest seasons we've ever seen in BYU women's basketball history. Six seed in the NCAA tournament, again disappointing finish. So, how do you? plan to maintain that level because i mean that's a lot to ask you're losing some key pieces some key seniors potentially right. some key transfers but every fan's like oh man that was so fun how do we do that again right. how do you make that happen in year number one with this new staff show up and do the work show up and do the work you gotta gotta get these kids believing you gotta get them because they know what it looks like to win now you know they just some of them have assumed uh, different roles so you gotta show up work um and, and let the chips fall Okay. I think a lot of times, uh, you know, two people worry about things that are out of their control. So we're going to control the controllables, and we're going to we're going to we're going to we're going to show up. Kristen, I'm not doubting the fact that this team will have incredible work ethic. Oh my gosh! Okay, yeah. work, work is the staff. key word. Yes, work. Yeah, because uh, work is work. Is you know, <laughs> yeah. there's a lot of people that it's just what it is, I and mean, that's why you got to you got to put that as your foundation. And then as long as your chemistry is good, you give yourself a chance. Aaron, great to have you as part of BYU Sports yes. Nation on the BYU Welcome Women's Basketball the staff. Fam. Yeah. Looking we're su we're super stoked to have you here. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to it. And it's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of great memories ahead. And me and my family are blessed to um, to be coming to Provo and call it home. Let's go. Awesome. The awesome. work is about Jack. to happen. It's happening now, and it will continue to happen. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, coming up, our elite voice of the day. And uh, you know, nine under par for a sports information director on the golf course isn't bad. In fact, it's good enough to get into the next stage of a major state tournament. This is BYU Sports Nation. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrum.com.
Gather the family for a midweek pick-me-up with an all-new lineup Wednesdays on BYU TV. Is that cool? Is that okay? You want inspiring? Yeah, we got that. Fun? Definitely. And surprising? Well, you'll just have to find out. Enjoy a marathon of good works to lift and inspire you for the rest of your week. See it all Wednesdays on BYU TV or anytime on the free app. This might shock you. I have to leave the kids and fly to Denver to take care of Dad. You have nothing to worry about. They'll be perfectly safe with me. Every little boy wants to be a spy. It's the life. You really are a spy. Kill them. Everybody's trying to kill you. I know. Isn't it cool? Yeah. Hey, guys. Huh. Oh, yo. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the BYU TV and BYU radio apps today. Or download the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. And please subscribe, rate, and review. Our question of the day, what is the one thing you want to see from BYU Sports as an entire entity in the next 366 days before the Cougars officially join the Big 12. At Ma05 Watkins on Instagram says, sweep all of the West Coast Conference championship games. So a small ask. (laughs) Very very small ask. Little little task. (laughs) How about just a couple of those? I would take a couple. Seriously. One in men's basketball specifically? Blaine Swallow on Instagram says, more of our winning ways. This past year in BYU sports has been amazing. I just want to see more of it. Is that too much to ask? Hopefully not. The women are doing their part, Kristen. I I completely agree. I think winning is the way to go. It's going to land better recruits. It's going to continue to just put you in that upward trajectory. That's what we want going into the Big 12. Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort is truly elite from Cougar Stats on Twitter. He says, and I quote, to crush the Zags, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentation of the kennel. Now, this is beautiful because it's a reference to an epic Arnold Schwarzenegger film, Conan the Barbarian, and his quote from the movie when he was asked, Conan, what is best in life? And so it's a spin off of that. Well played, Cougar Stats. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. We talked about it off the top of the show. Christian, this is wild. Former BYU TV production assistant, he's the current sports information director for BYU Golf, Austin Rustin, shot a nine under par 63 and qualified for the Utah State Amateur. He this is, is a- not on the golf team here. <laughs> just, just That's what that means, SID, sports information director. <laughs> that is so cool. And I'm sure that the coaches and the, and the players that he covers are thrilled for him beyond belief, Absolutely. as are we. Well done, Austin. That's awesome. Our thanks to today's guests, Mark Durant and the new BYU women's basketball assistant coach, Aaron Koloff. All right. Sorry to Dennis Pitta. We ran out of time once again. The conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. For Kristen Kozlowski, I am Spencer Linton. Shout out to Patrick Fishburne, speaking of men's golf. We'll see you tomorrow for another Deep Blue special. Go Cougs!